Hi, in this video I'll be showing you how to clean and maintain the Dyson V12. It doesn't matter which variation of the V12 you've got, whether it's the Detect, Detect Absolute, it could be another variation that Dyson have come up with since making this video, but the main thing that does vary are the number of tools and accessories that come with the vacuum. So some of the tools I show you in this model might be different to the one you've actually got in your own home. The one I'm going to be showing you today is the Detect Absolute. So this is actually a demo model that we've used in our showroom. Uh, I will be honest, it has had some use. It's not had a huge amount of use, uh, but I just wanted to give you a, a quick overview as to how to clean and maintain it. As you can see, the bin is quite dirty actually. So really the first thing you need to do, I suppose when, you, when you're going to clean and maintain any vacuum cleaner, it doesn't have to be the Dyson, is just go and empty the bin. Uh, do it in a well-ventilated area, so whether that it could be inside, some people empty the bins, uh, a lot of people go and do it outside. I've got one next to me, just next to the camera, so I'm just going to empty the bin itself. There we go. So that's already looking, looking a bit better, but really what I want to do at the moment, to start with, I'm just going to put a sheet of newspaper down here. The place I'm recording this at is in a utility at work. If you follow me on YouTube for a while, you know I've made several cleaning videos of different products, mainly Dyson cordless vacuums. They've done really well for me over the years. And you recognize this area. Uh, it's, a, it's a utility area. Um, I'll just move the camera to the left here. This is the ever famous squeaky tap. And I'm glad to say it's still quite squeaking away. So I've still not got it sorted. <laughs> and almost every time I turn the tap on, then it squeaks. And I think of you guys that comment on the videos, which does make me laugh. A couple of things you'll need, apart from a sheet of newspaper, and hopefully this should make it a lot easier for me to clean up after I've done everything, is a, so I've also got a paintbrush, just a dry, old one, doesn't really matter what it is, and a couple of these, these are microfiber cloths. Work really well, I'm going to have one damp and one dry to help me clean the vacuum. But really what I need to do to start with, I always try and do things in reverse, so I try and clean the cleaner things, and then get to the dirtier items at the end. Um, I will just make a comment that some of these tools, I will be honest, haven't been used. So although I'm showing you a cleaning process for them, uh, some of them, because it's a demo model that we use in a showroom, they haven't been used. So they, that's why they look brand new. But anyway, I'm just gonna start to put some of the bits to the side, then we can crack on. So I generally start off with some of the smaller tools first. And I suppose this is one of the main ones that tends to be used. Uh, I use one of these at home quite a bit. This is called the crevice tool. Uh, on any of these tools, first thing I do is just to have a look down, just to make sure there are no blockages in there. You can see that that's perfect all the way through. Some vacuums uh, that stop working, that could be the cause. We just got a blockage in the pipe. Uh, so there we go, squeaky tap. So all I want to do is just, I just want to get that slightly damp and I know some of these as I say haven't been used a huge amount but when it comes to the cleaning of these then all I would do is just give them a, a quick wipe over this is the ever famous combination tool now a lot of the time it could be a case that you get things like hairs wrapped around here so you just take the hairs off and then just give this a, a good wipe over just to make sure that's nice and clean. And this is another tool that Dyson put with a vacuum. This is the Reach Under tool. Now, they've come up with different ideas for this over the years. They used to do the Up Top tool, now it's the Reach Under tool. And essentially they do a similar job, but just the other way. So the idea of this tool is that you can actually just flick the switch and you can almost reduce the height that you have to, uh, or reduce the height of the vacuum. So it just makes it a lot easier to go under beds or under sofas, things like that. But when you come to cleaning, again, use the, just use the damp microfiber cloth, but I'd recommend fully opening it, just so you've got access to all of the tool, and then just shut it. So a lot of those can just go on the side. This is the hair screw tool that Dyson have come up with, or the anti-tangle screw that's just on the inside here. Now, what is really good is that Dyson have started to reduce the number of tools that you need to clean some of these and what I mean by that so just take this apart and traditionally on a lot of vacuum cleaners you'd either need a screwdriver or even a coin to actually take part of your vacuum cleaner apart 
And there are still some vacuums where you still need to do that. But I suppose for, just get the, get the paintbrush. So all I would need to do is just give this a, give it a, a quick brush down. Now the idea of the anti-tangle screw on here is that if you're going to use it for things like your sofa or your stairs, um, or I suppose even your car, if you've got things like pets, or if you've got family members with long hair, then you could get some hair wrapped around here. The idea is, with the anti-tangle screw, is that you don't get any hair wrapped around it. But none of these things are fully bulletproof, and I have seen examples from customers where it's not quite worked as well as they had expected. But uh, nevertheless, it really, really helps having this kind of technology. So all I would do is just give it a, a quick brush down to start with, and then get your microfiber cloth, just give it a, a quick wipe over. And that's that part done. And as far as this, as I say, this, this really hasn't been used a huge amount. Uh, and because they're on, in our showroom, we try and clean and maintain them as well as we can anyway, just for when customers come in. So I'd recommend just getting the, the microfiber cloth, popping it in there, and just give it a, a quick wipe down on the inside. And then when it comes to putting it back together, I must admit, it can be a little bit fiddly, but what you need to do is locate that part just against there, push it up, and then make sure you put the handle down, then you're ready to go. So that's these four tools pretty much done. What I'm gonna do is I'm just going to put these to the side, because the last thing I want to do is to be working on some of the other tools and getting everything dusty or dirty that I've just cleaned. This is the next tool. Uh, with this one, this is the laser detect floor head. Now Dyson keep changing the name of this, but essentially it is the, the laser detect floor head. Uh, you'll see it's got it just on the side here on some of the later generations of vacuums. They keep changing the name or keep tweaking it, which to be honest gets a little bit frustrating because essentially it's not necessarily the same tool because they keep modifying it, but it's very similar to previous carnations of the tool. And with this, because it's mainly used on hard floors, then it may not be as dirty as the, I suppose the main floor head, but all you need to do, I'll just show you that again, is you just a little latch on the side, pull that up, and then that comes off like that. Now, depending, I suppose, on how dirty it is, first of all, you just want to get the, the worst of it out, just using a brush, just to brush it down. And then once you've got the, got some of this out, then just get your, your microfiber cloth, your damp microfiber cloth, uh, I know I've not used the dry one yet, but I suppose essentially for the for the cleaning process I've been doing so far, it's not really not really needed it. And plus, because it's only slightly damp, then uh, to be honest, it doesn't take long long to dry. When it comes to this, I suppose again it depends on how dirty it is. Uh, it is up to you whether you wanted to just give it a a quick rinse. Uh, sometimes you can just give it a quick rinse just to get any of the any of the debris off there. If you've got any hairs wrapped around there, then just make sure you remove the hairs as well. And to put it back together, that just clips on like that into place, and then clip that there like that. So nice and simple. Again, I'm just gonna pop that one to the side. Now the other floor head that you've got, so this is the, the main floor head that comes with the V12. This has had a bit of use, and again, I have kept it clean over, over the last year or so that we've had it on display. Let's just take the, the main pole, the main wand off here. Uh, now this one you do need a coin for, but fortunately I've got a coin in my pocket. So all you need to do is just twist it. So it's only like quarter turn. That's all you need to do. Now I know I've mentioned about possibly using a screwdriver. Uh, on some of the earlier models, this was slightly thinner. So if you go back to some of the very early generation of Dyson, this was a lot thinner. Personally, I wouldn't recommend using a screwdriver for this because all you're going to end up doing is just mashing it up in there and making a horrible mess. So with this, again, depending on how dirty it is, just get a, a brush, just give it a, a quick brush over just to get the worst off. If you've got uh, pets or, again, members of your family that have got long hair, you could find you need to remove the hair from around here. Just give this a, a wipe over. Just check also, see what your bristles are like. So just have a look, are they starting to wear down yet? If they are, and if the pickup ability of your vacuum isn't as good as it used to be, it could be a case of just buying that part. So there are plenty of these available. 
Um, I'll sort of post a link to some of the spares available that I'm talking about. But uh, just check because sometimes, especially because these are really short and stiff bristles, then you could find that overall, if they're starting to wear down and if the vacuum is not picking up as well as it should do, then that could be part of the reason. In here, again, pretty simple. Just get your microfiber cloth, give it a, a wipe around on the inside here. Now this can be a little bit difficult to, to get round the back. It's not too difficult because the microfiber cloth I got is quite small. Uh, I'm sure you can take this apart and remove it. I'll be honest, at the moment I don't really want to do that because there's not, uh, this, this one isn't too dirty for me to, to keep clean. And then or as you go on the outside, then just give it a give it a wipe over. Make sure that's nice and clean. And I'm just going to get my other cloth because I just want to make sure that it looks nice and shiny for when I finish. And this one's going back in the showroom soon. So just want to make sure it's nice and clean for other customers that's coming in. And then all you need to do is just when you put that back on, so just clip that into place and then get your coin again. There we are, clip, then you're ready to go. So that's, that's that one done. And as far as the main wand or the main lance, as it says, V12 Detect Slim Absolute, quite a few different, different variations of this that Dyson have come up with, but not a huge amount you need to do. All I'd recommend is just getting the, uh, get the microfiber cloth, give it a good wipe over, make sure that's nice and clean. But the main thing with this is just have a look down so just make sure there are no blockages within the vacuum. Apart from that, there's not a huge amount you need to do in here. If you do see a blockage in there, then you just need to get something, probably like a, a long, uh, say a piece of strong wire, just to try and put down the middle here, just to get rid of the blockage. Because again, you could find if the vacuum isn't sucking as well as it used to, then that could be part of the problem. So this is the main part of the vacuum. And I suppose for a lot of people, this is really where the, the cleaning process will come into its own. Now, as you can see, I've already emptied it, but uh, it's still pretty filthy inside. So I've got a bit of cleaning to do on this bit. Uh, so once you've actually opened the bin, that's the latch at the bottom, you will see underneath, you've got another little latch that you just press that in, then you can remove the bin. Ever so easy. And let's just pop that to the side for a moment. So, this is really where the paintbrush comes into its own. Just hold it down like that, give it a, a brush. And with these parts, you really, really don't want to get them wet. Uh, there's way too many electrical components within this part. Now, with a lot of the Dyson vacuums, you will find if you tap like that, then I suppose <laughs> a lot of the work I've been doing for, for the last moment or so, is slightly negated but if you just tap it like that then that will get rid of quite a lot of the rubbish that's inside uh, for for some reason it seems to be a common thing that a lot of the Dyson vacuums you you can't get full access to to, to get them a good clean but at least doing this it should really really help um, and also if you have found that you've lost suction sometimes just doing this and getting rid of uh, some of the dust on the on the outside or you know just tapping that for a moment because you can carry on doing it I think basically I've got rid of all the the dirt and dust inside now so that's looking a lot better once you've done that then just give it a, a quick wipe over make sure that looks nice and clean uh, it's really really important to make sure you keep the seals clean as well so the rubber seals that's around here and also this part. Make sure they're really clean because what you can find is if, the, if there is still dirt or dust particles around here then if the bin doesn't seal properly then you will lose suction so that could be that could be really important. So now we've done that part put those to the back I don't want to put anything else on here at the moment. You've got the filter on the back here so this is a, a washable filter you can see you've got a picture of the tap or the faucet if you're in America and just move the camera slightly that way onto the onto my squeaky tap there we go so it doesn't have to be hot water it could just be cold water 
Uh, at the moment I just use cold water, that's all that's needed really. Uh, just hold it that way. I know they've got a picture of the tap, personally I think it's upside down. So all you want to do is you want to give that a, a quick rinse through. Um, you will find that if you've washed this several times, then it could be a case that, again, if the suction isn't as good, then it could me mean you need to replace the filter. Because although they are washable, you can only wash them so many times. Now with this, it is really, really important to leave that for about 24 hours to dry. So just pop it either on your draining board. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to go on a radiator or in an airing cupboard, as some people would suggest. Uh, but personally, I'd just leave that to dry, leave it for 24 hours. Uh, now, what I tend to recommend is when it comes to filters, when you buy a new vacuum, buy a spare filter. And the main reason for that is that if you come to wash your filter exactly like this, at the moment, I can't use this vacuum for about 24 hours until this filter is dry. Had I bought a spare filter, then I could be putting it back together and then start to vacuum it straight away. But because I've got that wet, then that means that I can't. Anyway, once you've done that, I'd recommend just giving it a, a quick wipe over with your damp microfiber cloth. So I tend to look a bit dirty now. The other main thing you can do, actually on the vacuum itself, is just to check the connections. So check the battery connection on here. Take that off. Just make sure everything within here is nice and clean and okay. There's not really a reason that it should be dirty, uh, but it's something I always check. And also just check in there to make sure there's no dirt or debris in there. Again, I wouldn't recommend using a, a damp cloth in there, especially as you've got electrical connections. Pop that in there, then I think we're ready to put that bit to the side. I'm just going to move this filter to the side as well, because I need to leave that for a while to dry. And then one of the final parts is going to be the bin. And this is really, I suppose, one of the main things, because it's quite a, a visible part of the vacuum. And you can, you can do this here. Now, some people will comment that, uh, I've, okay, at the moment I've not got a mask on when I'm doing this. And this isn't a work utility, it's not necessarily a, like a, a kitchen area, but I'd recommend, if you're doing this at home, I, I can tell at the moment, um, I've got some of the dust coming back up at me. So it is recommended to do it in a, do it in a well-ventilated area. Uh, I've had some comments or some suggestions, because I, I always like comments on my videos as to whether you, whether you like what I'm doing or whether you don't like it, if you've got a better idea, not got a problem if it's constructive. Um, other people have said to, to just use something like a, an air compressor to, to clean the vacuum, that's okay. If you've got an air compressor to just blast any of the dirt and dust away, that could work a treat, but I'd say for the majority of people in a domestic situation, you, don't, you might not necessarily have one of those. So just get your, get your cloth, give it a, a white round hair. And again, just make sure that the, the seals around here, uh, this one is really important because that is uh, where, where it, it almost goes onto the, the, the sleeve or the collar of the, the actual vacuum itself. So let's good, just give this a, a quick wipe down on the inside here. There we are, so you can really tell that this is looking a lot cleaner now. I know it's not as dirty as it, sh it's, it could be. I bet many of you have got examples of these where they are absolutely filthy compared to what I've been cleaning today. But I know it's not been too clean because this was really clean when I, when I first started. Um, I'm just going to move on to the other one because I think somehow, or at certain points, you, you sort of feel that you're just putting a dirty cloth onto a, a slightly cleaner vacuum. So this is looking looking a little treat now. There we are. Um, I've just checked around just to make sure all of the seals around here are looking okay. If some of those start to perish, or if they start to split a little bit, which they shouldn't do, uh, I know the Dyson products on the whole are really, really good quality, but if they do start to split or perish, then it could be a sign that you could need a, a new lid or even a, a new whole bin. But that is looking really good now. So I've got all this clean. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to move this. I'm going to get rid of this now. So I just want to be gentle with it. I don't want 
too much of the the dust to come out and back up at me. So let's get rid of that. To put the backing back together, ever so easy. All we need to do is just make sure that the filter is dry, just feel it, and it should feel bone dry. And that's nice and easy to, to pop back on, twist it, and then you're ready to go with that. As far as the bin, again, this is easy. It just clips on like that and then shut the lid. So as far as the vacuum cleaning process, that's basically it done. And then all I would do is just give it a, just give it a wipe down, make sure everything is nice and clean. So all I'd normally say is I would appreciate it if you subscribe to my YouTube channel, just give us a quick thumbs up, click subscribe, leave any comments below. I was asked for comments, as I mentioned earlier, whether it's good or bad, bad about the video. Uh, if there's something that you would like to have seen me do, um, with a vacuum as far as taking it apart a bit more then just pop it in the comments also if you have got one of these if you have got the Dyson V12 it doesn't matter whether it's the Detect or the Absolute or whether it's a different model that Dyson have brought out over the years then let me know what you think about it because I always appreciate the feedback thanks for watching